So you just decided to start your own YouTube channel in 2020. But before you upload your first video, you want to create a simple channel trailer or intro. Where do you start? In this video, I'll guide you on how you can make a simple, yet professional looking YouTube intro, fast and easy, using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're new to my channel, I make photo editing and video editing tutorials and occasional camera gear and tech reviews. So if you want to learn more, and this is your type of content, I would appreciate it you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you're wondering why I sound very different, I am currently trying this amazing text-to-speech software called Speechalo. This is a great tool to use if you are not comfortable talking in front of the camera. You don't have the equipment to record high-quality audio, or maybe you just don't like the sound of your voice. Speechalo is an online tool that instantly transforms any text into a 100% human sounding voice in just three clicks. If you want to learn more, I'll post a link down on the description. Okay, back to our topic. First of all, why use Premiere Pro instead of other video editing software like Filmora, LumaFusion or Kine Master? Well, as the name suggests, it has more pro features. You can really take your video content to the next level by using Premiere Pro. Second, you have more control with all the effects, such as video transitions, animations, color grading, and audio effects. Thirdly, there are tons of free and paid plugins and presets all over the internet that you can use to take your videos to the next level. Okay, so what do you need in making your first YouTube intro? First, you need a YouTube logo. Second, your own personal logo. Third, a YouTube like and subscribe banner. Fourth, a collection of photos or video clips. And lastly, a catchy music that would serve as your signature song or brand. Make sure that it's a non-copyright music. I'll post a link on the description on where you can download and use royalty-free music. So go ahead and check that out below. Please note that this is just a guide on how to make YouTube intros. We all have our personal styles and preferences. So try to make a video that reflects your channel brand or personality. Alright, let's create a new project and assign a project name. Let's name it. My first YouTube intro. Then just leave the rest of the settings to default. Then click OK. Next, we need to import our files here on the project panel. Let's go to the folder where I stored all my files. I've made three folders here. Clips, which contains all my videos. Logos, which contain all images. And music, which contains the song that I will use for my intro. Let me play it for you. Do you like the song that I chose? Comment down below. Okay, now we select all folders. And then drag them to the projects panel. Like so. And now we've imported all the files that we need to make our YouTube intro. Next, we need to create a new sequence so we can place our video clips, images, and music into the timeline. Go to File, New, Sequence, select AVCHD. 1080p and choose the appropriate frame rate. For this case, let's go with AVCHD 1080p 25. Then assign a name to our sequence and click OK. Now let's go to our music folder and drag it into the timeline on audio layer 1. Let me just expand it and resize the timeline and audio layer so we can see it better. Okay, now let's listen to the music and add markers by pressing the letter M on the keyboard. I will press the M on the keyboard, every time I hear a beat drop into music. We will then use these markers as our guide to place our video clips. Ok, let's play it. And add the markers. Ok, so now we're done placing the markers. One pro tip when video editing, is setting the in and out points on the timeline, and then enabling the loop playback, so that once you play it, it will be on a continuous loop, and you no longer need to keep dragging and repositioning the playhead every time.
Now let's go to our clips folder, and start adding video on the timeline. But before we do that, we need to go through each clip, and select the part that we want to add, by assigning the in and out points. Click on the left and right bracket icons to assign the in and out points, like so. And once you've assigned the in and out points, you can then drag this frame icon to the timeline. As you can see, the duration of the clip that I placed is very short, and does not reach the first marker. So what we can do is drag the right side of the clip, until it reaches the marker. Now our clip is properly placed on the timeline. We will repeat the same steps on each clip, until we are able to place all the clips on the markers. I will go ahead and fast forward this process. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Let's play it. Not bad, huh? Now it's time to add the logos and other graphics to the timeline. It's really up to you on how and where you want to place them. But for this demo, I want to place my logo to the lower right corner as a watermark. So let's drag it to video layer 2 on the timeline. Like so. And I want it visible on the entire sequence. So let's match the duration of the entire video, by dragging it to the right. So now when we play it, it is visible during the entire time. It's too big. So let's resize it, and place it at the bottom right corner by going to effects controls panel, and adjusting the position and size values. Let's scrub to the timeline and see what we have. Alright, we're done with the logo. Now let's add some text to our video. Place the playhead on the first marker. Then click on the text icon right here. And click on the screen. And let's type below. Then let's change the font type and size, by going to Essential Graphics Panel. Now let's align our text in the center of the screen, by clicking the vertical and horizontal center alignment icons right here. Let's have a look. Now we do the same on the second marker. We place the playhead on the second marker, click the text icon, and type welcome. Then we make sure that it is center aligned. And also drag to the right, until it reaches the next marker. Let's see. That's perfect. Next, let's add the YouTube logo on the third marker. Alright, not bad. I want to add some text together with the YouTube logo, so let's place the playhead on the third marker. Click on the text icon, and type to my. Then on Essential Graphics panel, we resize and reposition it to our liking. Don't forget to highlight the text before making any adjustments. Instead of changing the horizontal and vertical values on Essential Graphics, we can also manually place the text, by clicking the white arrow right here, which is called the Selection Tool, and then clicking and dragging the text, to the position we choose. Now let's add another text at the bottom of the YouTube logo. Like so. Then we match the duration, by dragging the side to the right. Let's have a look. Alright, we're almost done. Let's now place the like and subscribe banner all the way to the last part of the sequence.
And while it's highlighted, go to Effects Controls panel, then we resize and reposition it. Let me just lengthen the duration, by dragging it to the left. Okay, that's better. And last but not least, let's add our profile picture. I want it to appear the same time that the banner appears, so I will place it on the video layer above, and then match the length of it. Then while the profile pic is selected, go to effects controls and resize it. Then we click on the motion effect right here, then drag the profile pic to the lower left corner. Let's check it. Alright, just a little more polishing and we're done. Can you still follow along? As you can see here on our last clip, I placed a video transition called dip to black where the video gradually fades to black. I'll remove it and see the difference. Now let me add it again by going to the effects panel. And then under video transitions, select dip to black and drag it to the last clip. Double click on the transition, and let's set the duration to 15 frames. Now let's extend the banner and profile picture just before the transition starts. And then shorten our watermark logo to match it. Let's have a look. Okay, excellent. Now let's play it from the beginning. What do you think? Comment down below if you learned something. To make it ready for export, let's render the entire timeline by going to Sequence, then select Render Into Out. Now let's watch this in full screen. We can actually stop right here, and export this sequence. But I'm a perfectionist, and I want to add some effects and animation to the text and graphics that we've added. So let's go to effects panel and drag this cross dissolve effect to our logo right here. And set the duration to 10 frames. Now let's add a wipe effect to the rest of the text, and also to the YouTube logo. And set the duration to 20 frames. It's looking nice and sweet. Let's move all the way to the end and apply cross dissolve effect to the profile picture. And set the duration to 10 frames. Then select the subscribe banner. Go to effects controls panel. Move the playhead to the beginning of the clip and set the scale to zero. Then click on the stopwatch icon to add the start keyframe. Then move the playhead a little forward, and click on the reset parameter icon here, to add the end keyframe. Let's play it. And now I can finally say that we're done. Let's just render it again. And play it in full screen. Let's export this by going to File, Export, Media. Set the format to H.264. Leave the output name as it is. Then under Preset, let's choose YouTube 1080p Full HD. We leave the rest of the settings to default, 
and then click on the export button. And that is one way of making a YouTube intro. It's that easy, right? Of course you can add your own style and add other elements if you want to. Just be creative and use your imagination. Also, try to limit your YouTube intro between 10 to 15 seconds only. You don't want to bore your audience. Now believe it or not, I did not plan ahead on creating this intro sequence. I just had to go with the flow and let my creativity and imagination run its course as we moved along. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. Hit the subscribe button, plus that bell icon to turn on notifications. And oh, please do let me know what you think about this text-to-speech software. Does it really sound human or is it still monotonous and robotic? Comment down below. I'll see you on my next video. Thank you for watching.